Shavakat, Miss You, Yivy, 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 Shavakat, Uzbekistan. There is nowhere quite like Uzbekistan. This place really caught us out. There's some things that you really need to know if you're traveling there. But even if you're not traveling there, it's just a fascinating country to find out about. There are some real interesting quirks as foreigners being in that country that we've not had anywhere else. You really, you want to stay tuned to the end of this one. This video is going to be packed full of really interesting things about this place. The other thing you need to know though is, as of 2016, there's some really big changes in governance and that has really started to filter down. We did run into some problems in Uzbekistan. I'm going to share that in this video. Because it's on. Backpacking family, thank you so much for dropping by. So we do a lot of world travel. Me, my husband, and my baby boy, we travel the world and we make videos. So you can come on our journey, but also we can hopefully get you excited about traveling and equipped to get you going to these cool countries that we've enjoyed going to too. If you're first time, then please hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. If you are already one of our amazing subscribers and you've already been joining our journey, thank you so much. It really means that. And um, yeah, give us a like and drop your name in the comments. If you haven't said hi before, then tell me where you're from and just say hi. I love getting to know you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing. Anyway, into the main video. Islam Karimov was a president for 25 years. That's a long time. And so a lot of people did love him. But some people claimed there was a bit of a dictatorship going on and things were a little bit rigged and that there wasn't the changes that the people wanted for a long time. Whatever you think, whatever you're coming from, the thing that most people seem to be able to agree on is that there are big changes for the future. Shavakat Ms. Yuyev is a new president and it seems now Uzbekistan is super future focused, really modernizing, really making a lot of big changes to allow foreign influence in and it's a really exciting time for Uzbekistan. So we had from when we arrived. When we arrived in Uzbekistan, we arrived on a Sunday and we could not get any money. It was really scary because we had a baby with us. We usually, almost always, have some US dollars on us. We would have a mix up and we didn't have those with us. And we couldn't get the money out for that day. We couldn't get any money out on Sunday. Few reasons why. The banks are open, they look open, but they don't operate. There are people sat there, but they can't do anything for you. There might be some local jobs that they can do, but they couldn't help us with money. We had to go to a hotel. Typically foreigners have to go to hotels to use a special ATMs. They have two types of ATMs on the whole. They have ones for foreigners and they have ones for locals. And then actually there's then subcategories. They have for the foreigners, ones for MasterCard and ones for Visa, separate machines. And then you're meant to be able to get the money out which didn't happen for us, and then he changed the US dollars that come out of the machine into Uzbekistan at a change place. We couldn't get that done. We actually had to wait till Monday um, to actually even get some dollars out. And then, so we actually went over 24 hours without money, which is really scary. So we then had to change that money once we got the US dollars out. It's really difficult to get money in Uzbekistan. From what I gather, it's not just those, other people had had problems. So make sure you have US dollars when you go into Uzbekistan. So that's the first big thing that really caught us out. Oh yeah! Uzbekistan is one of those places where you get to become a millionaire. Let's go spend it. Another strange quirk you'll find when it comes to money is that there's a dual pricing system going on. And it really is one of the downsides of Uzbekistan at the moment, and I really hope this gets addressed. So as we were in Samarkand and we're visiting um, one of the big madrasas, and we saw a price that was really cheap in local money, and we're like, oh, fantastic. And when we got there, we were charged 10 times. And that I thought being scammed at first, and then they just explained and showed me, and I asked around, it is just a dual pricing for locals and foreigners. And I've heard various theories on this, but it's not the most welcoming thing. And it doesn't mean that things are super expensive. It was still only $5 to go in, but it just felt a bit weird. And it's worth being aware, so you can't prepare, you don't feel too ripped when you get there. At the moment, they do seem to have dual pricing for foreigners, which is a little bit of a show. At the moment, Uzbekistan isn't that cheap for an Asian country. And it's really hard to get cheap accommodation. We found that we we're having to pay around $20 for a room, and that's a starting price, and we did pay more. I have to say, when you start paying more, you get a lot more fee money. So we got a pretty shocking room in Samarkand um, at one point. Um, the hostel room was absolutely awful for our $20. And we were staying in Bukhara, we had an amazing room for around $50. It was absolutely beautiful. 
And we also stayed in an incredible hotel in Samarkand as well with which had a swimming pool and that was around the $80 mark and um, that was wonderful. That was actually a hosted stay and we absolutely loved it. And I have to say like it is amazing what you can get for your money at the higher end but there just doesn't seem to be a way in for budget travellers really. So if you're a super duper low budget traveller and um, just be aware Uzbekistan isn't as cheap as your as your typical Asian countries. Below we'll put some recommendations. We stayed in a whole range of accommodation from um, hostels to really cool quirky places to high-end hotels. So we'll put loads of recommendations in the links below to help give you an idea of some really cool places to stay. So the train network is pretty cool. Um, we were really surprised to see these trains that have like these really long noses. And when we arrived, I don't know what I expected, we used to see trains in Asia being a bit more old school. And they have some really cool modern trains. And there's, um, there's four different classes, I think four different classes. And you can book those tickets in advance. And to be honest, all the classes we came across, we, um, we tried a few different ones. They were all just pretty good and we really enjoyed them. And they weren't too expensive. You can get overnight trains, but most of the trains we took were day trains and they're really fast and really great. And yeah, we're really impressed with the transport. That's definitely a really modern thing. Uzbekistan is probably a lot more modern than you expect. It has this interesting mix where it's super modern in some places and then really old school, silk road, beautiful, ancient in other places. It's a really cool mix up like that. We mentioned about the big changes. We read loads of scary things about the borders. We heard that you had everything searched through thoroughly, that they would go through absolutely everything. We've heard about drones being confiscated, cameras being confiscated, and I've even heard, I don't know who travels with porn, but it came up quite a few times that people have had devices with porn on them confiscated. I mean, it's just good practice not to travel with porn, but hey, I'm not judging. Yeah, okay, not judging. Um, <laughs> So actually what we found when we got to the border was they didn't even check our bags. They were super courteous, super smiley, people seemed to be excited to have us there and they beckoned us through the borders. I can't guarantee everyone is going to get that experience, but from what I gather, more recently, the border guards are encouraged to be really welcoming and really open and yeah, just welcoming to um, foreigners coming over the border. We were treated really well. Um, I know it's probably because we had a baby with us that people put us through into the queues, but generally people were really sweet and just pushed us through. So from what I gather, the borders are getting easier to cross. Also, they're opening up more um, airlines, um, more airlines are coming into Uzbekistan. Generally, they really wanted people to come and visit Uzbekistan. Even the visas have changed. When we applied for a visa, we were probably the last of the old school visas. We had to photocopy every page of our passport um, to apply for a visa in the UK. But now you should be able to do a visa online and we'll put links to that. So visas are getting easier, border crossings are getting friendlier. You used to have to register with the police every time you stayed somewhere. You no longer had to do that, but you still need a hostel or hotel registration card for everywhere you stay. And they give the dates and where you stayed and they did check them on the way out. So although they may fade that one out soon as well, and um, make sure you collect those. Good chance they'll check that on the way out. They did with us. You'll hear that it's a police state. Um, yeah, it kind of still is. And again, it's changing, but it was very apparent. So when we arrived, we managed to barter a makeshift taxi down to take us into the city. And yeah, it got stopped. Stopped, got police checked. A good talking to from the police guy. And then eventually he was allowed to get back in and carry on and take us to where we were going. I don't know if that's just by chance, but you do get a sense of if it's not still heavily policed, it certainly has recently been heavily policed. And again, these things are lightening up, but there's still a sense of that going on. It needs to be more aimed at the local people. It seems they want to be really friendly to foreigners, um, but they are still policing their own people quite closely. Please, if you're from Uzbekistan, tell us what is it like living there? Do you feel like um, things are relaxing a little bit more? What's it like for locals? I'm only speaking as a foreigner visitor. What I would say, even though the policing seems aimed at locals, still respect authority. It has that kind of Soviet feel to it. I can't help but smile at people, so I'm like, hi, hi, and I'm like smiling at people as I walk by. And um, quite often, I know we're actually in Thailand and you smile at the police, typically they'll smile back at you. Um, I did notice that that's not really the case. Um, the police do tend to be, this is true of all of Central Asia, they do, do tend to be a bit more stern. It's a very different approach to authority. I think the idea is generally just to keep your head down when you walk past authority. Um, like I said, I couldn't help but smile, but 
That's just me being silly. Just a heads up about language. Um, so the Uzbeks do have their own language, but Russian is also really widespread. So as long as you speak a bit of Russian, a Russian phrase, but you should be able to get by. And again, on this thing of it really opening up and changing, um, we did notice that a lot more people um, seem to speak English, more than we expected actually. And we actually found that people were really sweet and hospitable and would come over and really try to speak to us in English. Um, it wasn't everywhere, but when it happened it was really nice. You could really tell things are changing and people are getting braver with us as foreigners. <laughs> Islam is the main religion, but you'll notice it's quite a relaxed version of Islam, at least on the surface, in terms of like the way that they dress, and people do seem to go out to drink, and there seems to be quite a relaxed, more lively nightlife thing going on. Most of the tourist attractions you go going to visit, they tend to be religious sites, but although it's quite a relaxed environment, do remember that the places you're visiting are religious sites, and although it's put forward as a tourist attraction. They still will be um, quite precious to people and some people will be going there for pilgrimage and um, will be going there for faith reasons. Um, so when you're exploring these places, try and bear in mind that although they're beautiful and they just seem like a whole lot of great and impressive architecture, for some people um, they're a special place um, for religious purposes. So when you're visiting, most of the places you're likely to go to, please bear that in mind. So, on the whole, people were super duper friendly, um, if not a little bit nervous, and I think it's just because they're not used to having foreigners um, visit. So we found some people might seem a little bit off at first, and then you, if you're looking properly and you're looking closely, you'll see that they're just coming off as a bit, a bit shy. So you can just tell from really sweet communication that they want to be hospitable and friendly, and some are brave enough to want to take photos with us. Um, on the whole, it was a super duper friendly place. You can really see Uzbekistan is opening up in a really exciting way. We absolutely loved Bukhara in particular because that was just a silk road in the most beautiful, incredible way. And we did love Samarkand and Tashkent too, they had a lot to offer. I think Uzbekistan is going to be one of those places that takes off. Although it's clunky and quirky and they're still working things out, it's just so beautiful and it has so much to offer and they're opening up and modernising, I just think it's going to be one of those places that very quickly becomes a place you must go. You know how Instagram just explodes places? There are so many places, I shouldn't say this, that they are just Instagram-tastic. So many beautiful doorways and buildings and um, sand-coloured alleyways and just beautiful stuff. So I do think Uzbekistan is going to take off in a great way. So much so I made a video on that as well just to show, give you that kind of vibe and give you an idea for why I think Uzbekistan could be one of the next big places to travel. I know lots of people are going to want to get on top of this and say that so you totally heard that here first. <laughs> it is an exciting place and I just think it's going in a really positive direction so if you're a traveller try and get there. I would even say, as it's family friendly, we met um, a lot of local families out with their kids traveling there. We didn't meet a lot of foreigners in general, but I just got a sense of, if you're okay with a bit of the quirks, the quirks you've mentioned, then I just think you'll absolutely love the place. Thank you so much for watching this video. It is really important if you're actually traveling there. We're gonna put loads of information below to summarize, because I do ramble a bit, so there'll be a bit more a concise summary below to help you out with visiting and getting to grips of what it's like to travel to Pakistan. Thank you so much for dropping by. I'm so excited to be doing YouTube and getting to know you guys. And I'm gonna go, ah, oh, subscribe! Yeah, please hit the subscribe button again. I really don't wanna um, miss a chance to get to know you, especially if you've watched this much, you're clearly interested in travel, and I'd love you to join our family and join our journey. We post every single Sunday. At the moment, we've topped it up to a Thursday and a Sunday. Two videos, that's four. Two videos um, every week. So please keep staying tuned, watching our videos. And if you love travel as much as I do, I know I'll see you again. Back through, back through, Chris Hansberry.